Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy N-A-P-P-I-E and welcome to my channel. On today's episode, we're going to talk about building, like how to get a room here in Ghana as a foreigner. Are you a foreigner? Uh, I was, my grandparents and their great-great-grandparents were taken from the west coast of Africa, I imagine, were dispersed throughout the Caribbean and North America, but we've come back home. So I am an African in Africa. <laughs> so he's not a foreigner. So in this video, I'm not going to call him a foreigner. Welcome to Ghana, my brother. <laughs> okay, so I needed to say Apawa. All right, so let me go again. Apawa. <laughs> so I made an episode in, um, on how to get a room here in Ghana, how to own your own house, and people were asking questions. Do you need to be a citizen? Do you need to get a residential permit? Do you need to get blah blah blah? Today we are here to talk about it. This time we are not going to talk about you owning it to yourself, but it's about rent. Some want to come to Ghana for just two weeks, a short period of time. So this is for you. So if you are here, stay glued, keep in touch, stay tuned, and let's do this. All right. Um, can you tell them your name? My name is Amatsiahu Ben Israel. Amatsiahu Ben Israel. Wow, that is a nice name. Mm -hmm. um, um, for how long have you been in Ghana? This is my third trip to Ghana. My first trip was in 2016, and then last year in the springtime of 2018, and then I returned permanently in December of 2018. So I've been here consecutively about nine months now. Nine months, all right. <laughs> so um, talking to Dusai, uh, Dusai York was having eight months in Ghana, so you are probably a month older than him. <laughs> so um, this is your place. And um, for how long have you been here? So, um, Havia, my partner, she's been here for uh, upward of four years, wow. and then I was um, invited to stay in uh, this January of this year, so I've been here about eight to nine months. And um, I think this is, this is actually a very good episode that um, is being shown because uh, when people in the diaspora are thinking about coming home to Ghana, Housing is, is a great consideration. You know, where will I live? How will I live? Will I have the same experience, the same lifestyle as one may be enjoying or experiencing abroad? So uh, for us, we've enjoyed the idea of just initially renting. All right. um, in preparing to come home to Africa, it's excellent to begin to think in terms of building a home because ultimately you would love to have a house for yourself so you don't have to pay someone for it. Uh, and what we encourage, see, be it our NGO, Adema Vezera, works in the areas of sustainable development, we encourage our brothers and sisters in the diaspora to think sustainably. When you're going to build a house, don't consider just getting the water from the local utility yeah. or the power from the local utility or the gas from the local utility to begin to think in terms of sustainable development, sustainability, meaning you can get water from the sky. You can get water from the aquifer, you can get power from the sun, you can get gas from a biodigester. So we would love to encourage our brothers and sisters in the diaspora to think and build sustainably. Yeah, this is awesome guys. So don't be stuck in your own homes. Please come back here. It's, it's lively here. Don't think we, we, we don't have it. We have anything you want to think of. Anything. Like, and we have it in abundance. Mm. So, um, can you give me the number of rooms here? Because you are in a hurry, I wanted to go around and show them, but you are in a hurry to go out. So, just tell them the number of rooms and the price. Uh, okay, sure. So, this is uh, originally this house was intended as a three bedroom home uh, with a living room and then the hall, one bathroom, which uh, often in Africa the toilet is separate from the shower. So, it's the shower and then the toilet room. Uh, when I came here, and this is an interesting point, uh, when I came here and I had, I saw the layout of the house and I, I shared with Havia, I said, well, you know, oftentimes our people think, uh, don't think in terms of assets, you know, turning something into an asset. We, we oftentimes have been taught to be consumer, you know, consumer mentality, but it's good for us to begin to think in terms of things becoming assets. So I said to Havi, I said, well, have you ever considered Airbnb? Yeah. Because what we could do is we could turn the living room into the master bedroom and then the other rooms 
uh, an additional room be opened up and we could begin to use two of the rooms for Airbnb and in turn the house can become a revenue stream for us. So we did just that. We made the investment into the furniture and the uh, appropriate furnishings and then we began to invite guests and we've had guests come time and time again so the house now creates income for us so it is now a four bedroom home and then the hallway we configured that to become the, the living area if you will which we put a dining table in the in the uh, in the hallway and uh, so uh, we pay roughly the equivalent of 65 us dollars a month for this house for a four bedroom then we have the apartment in the Holy back. Cheap is that? Then <laughs> we have the apartment in the back, which we use as not only a guest room, but we also have the classroom and the kitchen for our culinary program, uh, as well as the classroom for our Institute for Sustainable Development, Adema Vezira, where the children come and they will often do projects in the classroom. And there we pay a little bit less. We may pay about 50 U.S. dollars a month. So. Uh, combined, we pay a little bit over one, uh, a little bit over one hundred dollars a month for a four-bedroom home, uh, a one-bedroom apartment, and the landlord has allowed us to use the garden at no charge. So we grow our own food here. We have solar on the house. We have a well in the garden, so we get water. We get power for free. I mean, it really is paradise. Where in the U.S. will you get this kind of house or home? To rent for hundred dollars four bedroom homes oh my god you just can't believe it so please come home uh, do you need any permits like us you coming from the u.s do you need any permits to rent a house anything uh no there's no permit um if i can look deeper into the question uh, there definitely are things to consider when looking at staying long term in africa uh, in general uh, any african country um, so Ghana, uh, much like every other country, has visa limitations. Your visa, when you get it stamped at the airport, it allows you to stay for a particular period of time. So there are definitely considerations when you're saying, I intend to live in Ghana long term. You would want to look at what are the requirements to ensure that you keep your visa, your passport, and your status uh, in good standing. But you don't need any type of uh, permit to just come and rent a home, to buy a home, to buy land. These things don't require permits, but you would still want to learn, is there anything specific to uh, the visa? And, uh, but from our experience, um, yeah, everything is fine. So let's, let's, let's put it this way. Mm -hmm. Your last words for your people who want to come home and stay. Mm -hmm. What advice will you give to them? My advice would be to have great courage, to be of good faith. There are challenges everywhere you go. It's not specific and limited to Africa. There are challenges everywhere you go. But Africa is a viable place for resettlement. Whatever school of thought you're coming from, particular religion, spiritual background, and so forth, we would still encourage you to look at Africa as a viable place for resettlement. The challenges in the diaspora are tremendous, particularly North America in my perspective. I can see how great the challenges are. And for those in in systems, environments whereby there is still oppression, that there is social there are social injustices. I look at it from this perspective. I say it's likened unto a seesaw. Mm -hmm. And the only reason that your oppressor is above you is because you're remaining on the seesaw. If you would seek to have your oppressor come down, there's one simple thing you must do. You need to press. You need to get off, oh, okay. get get off, off the seesaw. <laughs> then your oppressor will come down. And for me and for many of the diasporans here in Africa, our getting off the seesaw was returning back home to Africa. That's awesome. So you need to get out of the seesaw and return back home. I, I learned you have a YouTube channel. Yes. Yeah, and um, I want people to reach out to you. Sure, so sure. can you give them the name of the channel? Sure. And any contact, sure. like your Gmail, your email, and yes. just anything. Okay. So give it to them. Sure. Uh, we just recently started a YouTube channel. It's called Amatsiyahu in Eden. Uh, the email is Amatsiyahu in Eden at gmail.com. I have a point of contact. Uh, plus two three three five four two three five nineteen fifty five. 
Uh, I'm on Facebook uh, at Amatsiahu Yisrael, and uh, feel free to message us if you have any questions, comments, and concerns. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Like, this has been an amazing episode. Oh, I really wish we would take this whole day to do this. Like, <laughs> it's an amazing thing. Like, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And see you in another episode. Peace out, guys. <laughs>